Hi everyone, and welcome back for another episode to Gloucester Canary Australia. Yes, this is episode 25, and it is the final episode for season one in 2024. Um, we've got a big episode, guys. So, on this episode, I'll be showing you guys an update on my breeding season. Um, I've had some luck um, for um, for September. I've had some chicks that have hatched, which is great. Um, also, we have Rod Knight from the Gloucester Club of Victoria. He'll be doing a talk and a demonstration on his preparation for his breeding season. And joining us as well, we have Michael Pulo. He'll be doing a talk on, um, on his Gloucesters. And um, he's had a bit of luck also. So he's got some chicks that he's also hand feeding and, and doing well with that. Okay, guys, let's get into it. Hi, everyone. Michael here. Um, today, I'm going to show you a few chicks that are about close to two weeks old, which I'm still helping hand feeding. Once the chicks hatch, uh, if you've got three or four in the nest, you've got a better chance of survival if you help them along. As you can see, she's feeding. I don't always give them a little bit of a top up, especially late at night before lights out. The reason why I hand feed is because I like the birds to be more tame. Also, it just helps uh, especially when they have about four or five in the nest, the younger or the weaker bird um, won't get enough food and you might end up losing the chick. So this way it gives them a better chance of survival. As you can see, they have a trio going on. Same cage. Off corona hen on the left and a white corona hen on the right. Hard feather yellow cock.
As you can see, he's getting fed. But I like to give him a bit of a pop up. As you can see, he's opening up. If you want to see how I mix the formula, you can catch it on episode 14. Over to you, Alfio. Okay. Thank you, Michael. That was awesome stuff, mate. Okay. Now, over to you, Rod. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming today. I'm going to do a little talk on um, how I prepare my birds and what I do in the bird room. A um, few ideas. Everyone's different. Everyone's got their own ideas. So... I've got a few flies, so I've, I've presented that to everybody, and I'll, 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 I'll read through, and then I'll do a little demonstration how I um, pair my birds. Uh, Rod Knight's ideas to a successful breeding season. Your setup. I've found in the past that your birds require plenty of room to breed at their best, and I use a double breeding box per pair. This makes it a lot easier to keep them clean, as you can divide them off while cleaning each side. Your bird room should have plenty of windows facing north, if possible for lighting and sufficient ventilation. If you can, a timer lighting system can be used to help with uh, your lighting prob problem. You should always, you should all, uh, you should be aiming at least fifth, about 15 hours of daylight each day during your breeding season. A good idea is to try and regulate the temperature throughout your bird room by keeping it closed up during the cold months and shading out windows with plenty of ventilation during the hotter months. If you have room, a good sized flight will come in handy during the off season between show and breeding seasons to store your birds. This will give them a little bit more freedom and plenty of much needed exercise. If possible, running water to your aviary will make it so much easier to perform your various duties throughout the year. Uh, diet most important diet. I keep it simple. In my flight, I have a large seed hopper hanging from the ceiling full of plain canary and another four smaller hoppers filled with different seeds, one with grey and white millet seed and plain and red pannikin seed, another with canola seed, another with nig and linseed, and the last, I have whole oats seed. This gives them plenty of variety throughout the year and there is less wastage of seed as well. They also have fine shower grit and cuttlefish available and daily greens and apple. Um, be careful with your shower grit. Make sure you wash it well and spread it on the floor or somewhere where there's uh, a lot of sun, so dry it right out. Don't give them wet, wet shower grit. That'll kill them. So just a little tip there. Um, in my breeding boxes, I mix, play, I mix have a mix of plain and tonic seed in their hoppers, shower grit, cuttlefish and daily greens and apple. Make sure that you wash them well. Oh, I've just said that. I give them all my birds solely at D all the year, throughout the year and extra bottles of weak raspberry cause or cordial, which I have been told stops them getting the runs. So I don't know if it works or not, but my birds seem to be okay. Um, hygiene. This is one of the most important duties you will need to have keeping birds. Um, once a week, I clean both flights fully by cleaning ledges and perches and walls with plain hot water. I don't use chemicals. Um, I don't like using many chemicals. I use fine wood shavings on the floor and a brush and pan to remove any droppings. I also spray all the ledges and wood shavings with avian spray, which keeps mites under control. I then top up the wood uh, shavings on the floor. In my breeding boxes, they are all metal trays, which have newspaper cut to side, side to catch the droppings. These have clean newspaper putting them in every night and once again, once a week, I clean out under the trays and all the perches and walls with just hot water. I also spray avian spray under the trays. All bottles are cleaned and refilled once a week with fresh Solivert D supplement. I try and give all my birds a bath at least once a week in the warmer months two to three times a week. Occasionally I put some 
ivermic in their bathing water. This also helps with any mite problems you may have. Another good idea is to trim their claws and beaks, especially before breeding season. Um, you could also do their vents, if you're, especially with Gloucesters, because they're a very um, dense feathered bird. Uh, records and breeding. I think your breeding preparations start at the beginning of your show season, and all exhibitors should keep records and results of all their birds that are in shows. And that's probably the most important part of your, your breeding season, uh, is having records. Without records, you won't have a successful breeding season. And what I've done today, I've run off some flies. These are the ones I use. They're just a A4 sheet, and they give you free rounds if you want to have free rounds. They're nice and big, and you, and you put all your information on your breeding season, what sort of variety of bird you've got, cage number, which corresponds to your, what you've got on in your room, and you've got the hen, the cock, ring numbers, uh, their birth year, and colour if you want to put the colour, what they are. And then when you pair them up, and then you, this is for setting your eggs. So they're very important if you want to do this to set the eggs. So I'll explain with that. I think I've got that down further. So I'll keep reading. Um, I also keep an eye on my, out on my competition when I show my birds and note who seems to win shows often and trying to get a few birds off them each year to strengthen my own bloodlines. I never s separate my cocks or hens for two reasons. I find they are, seem a lot happier together being together in the flight and get used to each other before breeding season starts. And secondary, I generally don't breed too many birds and don't get rid of enough and don't have time to separate my birds. That's, I work full time. I don't, just haven't got the time virtually. That's the main reason. Um, I also never trim the hen's vents because I don't like to interfere with something which comes natural to a bird in, like in the wild. They don't get their fed vents uh, trimmed, so I don't seem to worry about it. I generally start off by placing each hen in a double breeding box at about the start of the last week in August. Well, I think that's changed. I, I personally think the months we're, we're, months are going to move to a month ahead with the weather. Um, September is very cold now, and I reckon it's probably better starting towards the end of September, early October, personally, now. Um, just take, for instance, today is only going to get to 12, so I give her a nest and a few strands of hessian and start with her, with her on egg food. This consists of the following, two cups of fine breadcrumbs, one cup of cook, quick cooking oats, half a cup of wheat germ, which I can't get anymore, unfortunately, um, half a cup of semolina, half a cup of polenta, half a cup of farrix, half a cup of more seed. This comes becomes my biscuit mix and I take two cups of it and add one cup of cinnamon, one teaspoon of cinnamon powder one hard-boiled egg. Make sure you boil your eggs for at least 10 minutes, um, fully 10 minutes. Um, 750 mils of soluble D and three cups of sprouted seed. I blend it all together and this lasts me for about three days, perhaps four days in a sealed container um, and I keep it in a sealed container in the fridge. My sprouted seed consists of three cups of canola seed, one cup of blue budgie mix and half a cup of safflower. After about one week, I introduce the cockbird and wait until she has made a nest with hessian. I then give her some cotton wool on a peg for her to line her nest. Once she lays her first egg, I remove it and place it in the box. In, in its place, I put a dummy egg in, a, in the nest, and there's the dummy eggs I've, I've brought along. I only need three for each um, pair. This is repeated over the following two days, and on the fourth day, I give her back her own eggs. Make sure you turn her own eggs while they're in the box, as this keeps the yolks from settling in, setting in one side of the egg. Um, with what I mean by a breeding box, the egg box, um, I've got a box which I put grids in ply, three mil ply, a timber box, a bit of felt on the bottom, and on each square, I've got a number which corresponds to the cage number. So. Well, if your pair's in cage one and she lays an egg, well, I put the, I use a little spoon, a little spoon or even plastic, and I just dig her out and I put her in the, in the, in the one. And that happens over three days, and on the fourth day, I, I give her back her own eggs. Um, make sure you, t yeah, I've read that. Um, I then wait about five days with a torch, which I bought a little LED, they're great little LED torches now, little torch. Um, where are we? A torch. I check for t fertility. 
You should see veins or a dark mass in the egg if it is fertile. If they are, in about another nine days, they should hatch. Altogether, about 14 days. Um, sometimes if you get really hot, hot weather, you might, might hatch a day early, 13 days sometimes. If they are not fertile, I remove the egg and the nest and the egg from eggs from the her, and about three days later, introduce it with a new nest and hessian, and let her try again. Sometimes I may decide to try a different cockbird. Once the chicks are about seven to ten days old, rings I put rings on them, and I haven't got them to you today. Doesn't matter. This should be done for of a night before she roosts to on them for the night. After about 21 days, when they sh should be out of the nest and pecking at food themselves, I put them in a separate cage and sometimes introduce an older bird on the second round, of, uh, uh, and on the or on the second round, a bird from the first round to help them to know how to feed properly. They will continue to receive egg food until they have finished molting, ready for showing. On a final note, breeding can be very frustrating at times and rewarding at other times, and the effort you put in will determine the results you end up with. Never give up and keep trying to improve your uh, great bird, the canary, Rod Knight. So that's just a rundown of what I do. Um, I brought along a few items here today. That's my whiteboard I use. Um, I've actually I've got all my showcase in cupboards. So what I've done, I've when I'm breeding, I don't need a showcase, so I've got little hooks here. I, I hang it up on the on the doors, so that saves a bit of space. And this is just a whiteboard marker. So what I do, I just write if I've got say five, I just put five there. And then when she lays her first egg, a date, second egg, third egg, and then the date I set them and the date she's due. And then once I've rung them, I put ring numbers on there as well. And you should also have it in a book as well, which is this. So so that's on there. And also you have that, you know, on your sheet of paper. So I bought, I'll, I'll print off quite a few of these. Everyone wants to take something well for the day. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm not in computer literate, so I don't worry about them. Yeah. Yep. In regards to your mix, yep. you put um, your D, yeah. and you also mix your and with your Yeah, mix the whole lot together. Yeah. For me, I wouldn't do it in the heat because I think I, know, I usually have one dish of sprouted yeah. and one dish of the egg. Yeah, There's more than one way. Yeah, I, I just I work full time. I keep it keep it frigid. Oh yeah, I know it's a hot day, but generally by the time that heat comes, it's all eaten. It's gone of a morning, so I don't worry. But I've never had birds die from or got sick from it. So. Yep. Oh, it's just a modern vitamin and mineral supplement in the water, that's all. Just Yeah, yeah, mix it in. They have it all year round in the bottles. I, I have the their water bottles, the little hundred ml bottles which hang upside down with a little hole on the cap and they just drink through them. I also got finger drinkers like you in one of your shows you had a few months ago with that you slide on, your little blue Yeah, I'll, I'll give them those as well. Yeah. It's good when the when they've got young, when they're just it's just on the perch, so they're not used to getting the head through. So you always you have extra finger drinkers in, so in the drink. So they must always always have water. So with that you put it there, is powder in there? Or? Yeah, you buy it in the uh, I buy in the big one, the nine hundred gram. Yep. No, no, no. I mix it. I always have it diluted as water. So that that gives you your consistency. You've got to have water with your mix. Yeah, yeah. So that replaces just straight water virtually. So. And the nests I use are these metal ones. Um, and they're, they're quite good size. I've got a little bit of felt. I've got an old um, removalist rug, the felt rugs, nice and thick. And I use a little saucer and I just cut rings out and then make sure they get tied. Either glue them down or wire them. I've got a little um, fuse wire on there and I just twitch it together because the, the, the hens will just rip them out. I'll just keep ripping them out and... And also, you have hens on the second round. They generally they wreck the bottom of them because they pick up the. They want to go again. They 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 try and lie on their nest. So that's that's when you need your nesting material, which is yeah, you've got to wash them. You've got to, if you can reuse them. Sometimes you can't reuse them. They've destroyed them. They put holes in them. And so this is a, ne a hessian holder on the side of the cage, and that's the hessian. I, I buy it by the meter, Spotlight or Bunnings or 
And this is quite a good grade. It's not too thin and it's not too thick, so I get about that long. So around this time, every night, I'll sit in front of the tally, got me a little bowl and I've got me scissors and I'll just... And I generally wear masks too because um, it's amazing how much stuff flies of this when you're ripping it up and it just so it makes you cough a bit. So, you so. Do that length, right? Oh, you can have shorter, but I do that length. They love it because they can wrap it right round and it sort of fits around the nest nicely. So I yeah. do that length, yeah. Um, and then what, once they've got that, what they do, they, they, they wrap it round and so that that's it and then they may shape it. And then what, what you do, on a peg, you give them a, a, a bit of this. So it's just, um, instead of cotton balls, this is rip, ripple line, they call it, ripple. And it's in, yeah, it's in there, I will open it up. But all I do, I get, see it comes in, see it comes in already ready to tear off. So I just do that and I fold that and I put on a peg through the wire. And then straight away, she's, oh, yeah. So, and then she'll line it neatly. And then what you do, as, as she's every morning, some, some hens are just hopeless. They, they, and this is an egg. You should all, everyone should have one of these, a shaper. So you just get that there and you give it back. And then over the next few days, she, she gives, you give her a bit more, you'll have much she wants. And some of them keep going. You've got to stop giving And it'll be flat on the top. They put some, you've got to pull it out. And, most important to get the, the, the shape of your nest right because you don't want eggs falling out or getting tucked underneath. Or, so this just gum com, compacts it all and you get a lovely shaped nest. So, But there are some dumb, dumb hands, I tell you, they just got, especially young ones, first time, they've got no freaking idea. Uh, can you hear a light bulb? Yeah, light bulb, the old, um, yeah. Don't press too hard. Bang! <laughs> um, and also, now when we've with, um, setting your eggs, I got the, I buy these little sticks from um, Office Works. They come in a five hundred or some. And what I do, I have different colours, and I, I have high, I also have a calendar on the on the wall. And what I do, I when when um, she lays her eggs, I set them, and then I put a a check date. So I, I, I say five days. So once I've set them. I want to check them after five days, all right? So I'll put a little sticker, I'll write on the calendar, um, say such and such, and then I'll, I'll put that sticker with a date on it, on either the, um, the, feed, the uh, seed feeder or a bottle or something or it's right from the cage, and that way I've got it there and I've got it there and I won't miss to check the egg. So, and then once, once I know they're fertile, I, I put a due date, so another, I'll write on the calendar that could be another nine days, she's due date, I'll highlight it, do a highlighter in orange, and then I'll put that over the top of the yellow one, so that's a due date on it, so I can, it just keeps it, all right, and then once, once they're hatched, I, um, the final one is a ring date, so seven to ten days, I, I generally go about eight days, so on the calendar again, I'll go eight days from when they've hatched and then I'll put a date and then I'll highlight it in green. So green kind of, so that's right, just, just to keep an eye on everything. So, and then, and if you, if you lose, if, if that gets wiped off, at least you've got that. You've got to have it in hard copy as well. So you don't want to lose that on then. Oh shit. When I, so at least you've, you covered yourself with that. So that, then that, that's the most important thing when you're breeding is your, your data and your notes. And you need it too because you want to know what, you don't want to pair it up brother and sister and you want to look back at your notes and you want to see who's been winning your shows for you, usually your nice birds and you, you generally pair with your better birds together. It doesn't, you don't want to always get champions. I've found a lot of my champions have come from birds I really haven't shown much. They've just been just a, a tear down and they just throw a good, good bird. So, but, but yeah, that's about it, I think. Covered it, so... Yeah, any questions? We got any questions? Yeah. Covered all. Covered all? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I've got uh, 15 five. I'll put up 15 five, 12 lizard, and six to eight Gloucester.
Okay, guys. Now, I'll show you how I put on the rings on my chicks. Now, usually, I put the rings on my chicks at around seven days old. I use the smaller size ring uh, for my birds. Now, sometimes when you've got one chick in the nest, I do tend to check at about five days old due to, you know, being one chick in there gets fed that bit extra and grows that bit faster. So, so usually if there's one chick, I'll check at five days. And if there's more than one chick, I'll check them at seven days. Now, to put on the rings, you would um, have to like put the three and you'll grab the back toe and you'll bring it forward. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Now, I would like to give a big thank you to all the people that have got involved in the channel. It uh, really means a lot, and without you guys, it was not possible. So I really appreciate the support from everybody. Um, I appreciate the subscribers, all the people that have subscribed to the channel. Uh, it has been awesome. Um, yeah, please subscribe. Throughout the breeding season, I'll be um, send, putting up some little videos here and there uh, to give you guys some updates throughout the breeding season. Um, I really appreciate that, guys, from everybody. Um, now, the reason being the final episode for 2024 is in September because I know in October... I'll be flat out with uh, with lots of chicks everywhere, and I just want to really focus in my bird room. Um, so my life at the moment is work, family, bird room. So and that and that's fine. So I really enjoy the hobby, and it's great. Um, now we've got some big things happening next year. Uh, we've got more annual shows um, that we'll be attending. Um, we'll be also attending some young stock shows. Um, we also have some, like I've said before, we've got new members of the club, so we some new novice people that are that are joining the club and will be showing birds, which is great. Um, so yeah, guys, um, thank you for everything. Um, it has been great. Um, like I said, I'll give you guys update throughout the breeding season. Um, and yeah, so guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you want to join the Glossa Club of Victoria. The details are on my Facebook page. Um, okay, guys, um, till next time. Okay, have a good one.